Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and what we have for you today is our review of the Samsung Q950A soundbar. This is a 11.1.4 Dolby Atmos enabled soundbar and as of recording this review it is priced at about 1,15,000 rupees on Samsung's own uh, India website and I'm pretty sure if you look around in the offline market you may be able to get a better deal uh, on it. So answering the most important question how good is this soundbar it is really really good i mean we've played a lot of movies on this soundbar we've played a lot of music on this soundbar and we have played a lot of games uh, using the soundbar now for this test we had the lg c1 in for review which supports earc and this uh, soundbar has earc output so we connected the two together set it up to what would be a general living room uh, kind of a situation where you would use the soundbar and judged its performance now remember Remember, <clears throat> the soundbar and the satellite speakers have uh, drivers that are firing in different direction including upwards to simulate the height of Dolby Atmos and we are going to get into that performance but before we get into the performance let's talk about the build and design of uh, uh, these speakers now the subwoofer is the most minimalistic style of a subwoofer that we have seen and it'll just blend into your entertainment setup a lot of people may want the subwoofer to look a little more flashy i don't i think it's great and it's simple it's compact and it'll fit in your room with ease the soundbar itself isn't very tall in terms of it, its height but it is quite deep and it is very wide as you can see uh, from these shots it is fitting the entire uh, length of the 55 inch TV we've placed it under so needless to say if you have a 55 inch or slightly larger 65 inch TV this soundbar will look really nice below it but it could look overkill if you have let's say a smaller TV a 50 inch TV and it does have a commanding position with these angular sides uh, uh, on it the only downside to the uh, build of the soundbar is that this fabric cover that is that it has now I'm someone that has a pet dog at home and his hair fly all over the place and within one day of using the soundbar I had to wipe it regularly just to get his hair away from the soundbar so that was something that was absolutely immediate and the same can be said for the satellite speakers as well before we move on to the satellite speakers there is uh, there are physical buttons on top of the soundbar and it does have three HDMI ports one of them is EARC so you can connect it to your television and it has two more pass-through ports which support HDR 10 plus coming to the cons of the design of the soundbar it has this small display which is on the top now why it is on the top is very perplexing because when you are sitting in front of the soundbar and you want to change some of the settings you actually have to walk all the way to the soundbar and check out that little display on top i don't understand why you couldn't just use the hdmi port that the tv is connected to to control some of these settings because uh, we have reviewed the sony hd z9f in the past for example and that has one of the best soundbar UIs that we've tested simply because when you connect it to the television, you can use the television as a screen to control a lot of the settings, making it really, really convenient to set up. So the position of the display on the soundbar is really odd. I mean, it has a bunch of LED lights in the front, which uh, uh, come up when you wake up Alexa or even when you uh, control the volume of the soundbar you do get those led lights in front but i wish the display was there i can understand that because of the number of drivers in this soundbar they didn't put the display in front but it was a waste to put it on top i mean if you need to control let's say uh, different channels on this soundbar because remember you can do a lot of things from the smart things app that samsung has but if you let's say need to enhance the output from the center channel or from the surround speakers you can only do that using the remote control and go into the display so you got to change the settings and ensure you are looking at the display to know where you are plus and minusing whatever of the settings which can get really irritating at times and i wish sometime an update comes where you can control uh, the output from the various channels from the app rather than having to go and do it from the soundbar itself it gets very annoying or like we've seen with the sony htz9 if you get a full on-screen uh, menu to help you control a lot of the settings so those are just some of the things to keep in mind Coming to the satellite speakers, they are really big and hefty. They have uh, three drivers. One is firing, of course, from the front, one from the side and one from the top to give you kind of a more immersive uh, experience. And they do feel very, very premium and they're really easy to set up. All you have to do is plug it into a power outlet and they will connect to the soundbar and the subwoofer automatically. 
The only downside is that the cable, the power cable that comes in the box, I feel is a little short because uh, if you can see, I have placed it out here, which was kind of perfect for me to enjoy some content. I was even moving the stool around and in elevating the height of the speaker to different positions to see how the surround experience works. And the only problem is I had to drag an extension cord through my living room just to ensure that there was power connectivity for these speakers. I mean, you can, of course, uh, they aren't uh, very proprietary power cables. You can of course go into the market and get longer cables but i wish the cables power cables that came in the box were a little more longer because let's face it in the average household you really don't have uh, you know power points behind your sofa unless you're wall mounting these speakers and that is also possible that you have windows or glass or something else so yeah the power cord should have been a little longer for the satellite speakers but overall the build of this uh, soundbar is extremely premium and the satellite speakers are big hefty and they will just you know find their space in the corner of your house wherever you place them the soundbar even though it has these angular designs will find its spot right below your tv and blend in and not be a distraction when you are consuming content and once you've set it up and if you want to know how to set it up you can go back and check out a video that we've done on the unboxing and how to set up this soundbar uh, that should give you a clear idea of what to do when you get the soundbar and you know uh, some of the things that you should keep in mind now before we get into the performance of the soundbar, there's one thing I want to tell you, and that is auto EQ. Once you download the uh, SmartThings app on your smartphone, just you know set up the soundbar and switch on auto EQ. What it does is it calibrates the soundbar to your room in which you are using it. Um, you don't have an external mic like we saw with the Sennheiser Ambio that we recently uh, reviewed. You get this mic with uh, the soundbar that you have to place in the room at, at your sweet spot where you're going to sit and it calibrates the audio for that spot in the room. You don't need to do that out here with this soundbar. The soundbar just sends out a tone and it has microphones inside the soundbar and the subwoofer as well which is going to calibrate the room uh, for the way the sound is going to sound and it really does help. Now moving over to the sound quality remember we kept the auto eq on and it does have other modes which you can switch between and you can control things like the bass and the treble of the uh, soundbar if you like but what we did was for the most part we just left the auto eq on and played a variety of content and i can tell you this is the best sounding soundbar we have tested to date hands down when it comes to the volume and the quality of sound output. So before we get into the details, here is just one minute of copyright free music and some of the games that we played. Of course, we can't show you the audio from movies, which we're going to talk about for copyright reasons, but hope this gives you a glimpse of the performance of the soundbar with this music and this game clip. So kicking things off with music, now we played music from a lot of genres, be it rock, pop, some classical Hindi music and I can tell you that this soundbar has a lot of definition like a song like Over and Over by Hot Chip which has this thumpy bass, this soundbar has really really good bass. Even songs by The Weeknd or Phil Collins or some classics uh, you know from Indian classical music as well, Bollywood, we played a lot of genre of music on this and trust me when I tell you that this soundbar is going to bring the house down when it comes to the party. A lot of audiophiles amongst you are going to argue that Yes, a soundbar's performance is not as great as a dedicated 2.1 channel for music and nobody's going to argue with you there. But this soundbar is meant for multiple use and I can tell you hands down if you are going to listen to music on this soundbar, you are going to have a great time at home. Uh, you can of course control some of the presets from the app as well to ensure you are getting the right output and if you think the bass is too heavy for some things, you can always go into the app and reduce it. 
Moving over to movies. Now, this is a Dolby Atmos enabled soundbar and we played a lot of Dolby Atmos content. Ready Player One is a great example of good channel separation. And we, of course, have a Dolby Atmos demo disc, which, you know, has, you know, the, that leaf falling that you see in the theater or the rain falling or a plane taking off. Now, when we reviewed the Sennheiser Ambio back then, what we said was that it really did a good job with all its drivers in the soundbar bouncing the sound around you to kind of get you that surround experience, but it still felt virtual in a way because you didn't have the rear, the rear satellite speakers giving you a surround experience. What happens here with the Samsung is because you have rear satellite speakers, not only do they have upward firing drivers, remember the soundbar itself has 15 drivers firing sound in different directions and you have three drivers in each of the satellite speakers making it an overall of 22 drivers uh, in the soundbar and the satellite speakers so um, you are going to get a very good coverage all around you. Now, there are upward firing drivers in the soundbar and the satellite speakers itself. And when we were shooting the sound up to let it fall on you for the Atmos effect, the rain is a great example for this. It really didn't feel right. I mean, you felt like it was coming from somewhere in front above you rather than right on top of you when it came to the audio performance of, let's say, the leaf falling demo on the Dolby Atmos demo disc or the rain. But in a movie like Ready Player One, where you have all these cars and bikes swishing around in the race at the 11 minute mark it really really feels very immersive even uh, in a movie like the dark knight rises where you know batman is coming on the scene for the first time in that motorcycle chase with bane everything is happening all around you and it is an absolutely immersive experience even when we move over to gaming now uh, ghost of tsushima is a game where once you uh, get into ghost mode for example you have this thunder and lightning all around you and that is where the rare speakers really kicked in to give you that experience of dish, 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 you know going into ghost mode or even when uh, you know the enemy archers shout out before they shoot it out the direction in which the archer is that's from where the sound is coming and you feel the arrow whiz by all around you giving you a really really immersive experience the only downside like i said is re you really don't get the uh, same level of height effect like you would with a dedicated dolby atmos setup now we have been fortunate enough to experience a real home Dolby Atmos setup with dedicated speakers mounted on the ceiling and giving you that rain example all over again. You really do get that immersive experience of the rain falling on you because it sounds like it's coming right from on top of you. So that would probably be the only con in the performance of uh, uh, of this soundbar is that when it tries to mimic height, it feels like it's coming from around you somewhere but not directly above you. But for the rest of the performance, be it the audio output Put the quality of the sound i mean in music we've heard instruments we didn't know were there in a part of the song even in a movie which has a lot of action and mixed audio the vocals and conversations were very very clear the surround effects were extremely immersive even in games and especially if you have a playstation 5 you can actually go and tweak the settings of the playstation 5 for the position of uh, the speakers that you've kept it in and calibrate the sound by the sound bar setting itself so you really do get a very enveloping experience so yes if you are in the market to go out and pick up a sound bar you can definitely consider this one in the premium space just based on the quality of sound that it brings the bass is kind of ever present for kind for a lot of the content but not in a bad way i mean when you need the bass to kick in and give you a good thump it's right there but even during conversations if someone has a deep bassy voice you can feel the gravel in that voice very well on this soundbar and that's just a testament to how good the quality of audio output it it's it's just brilliant Moving over to the remote control, it's fairly simple and that's a good thing. You have your power, your source, which is essentially to switch between the different HDMI inputs that it has, the Bluetooth pair button, uh, which makes it really easy. And of course, some navigation. If you have a Samsung TV, you can of course use it as a universal remote. But the point is if you have HDMI, CEC, and once you've done the auto EQ, you really don't need this because you can control the soundbar with uh, uh, your TV's remote control to switch it on and off. And trust me, when you just leave it on the auto EQ, uh, you are gonna get a great overall experience. It's not that you have to go in and change the settings of the soundbar to suit the content because it just works so the Sennheiser Ambio is a 2 lakh rupee soundbar, but that's just a single bar that sits under your TV and that has exceptional sound quality as well when you're talking about sound quality on its own but for almost half the price of the Sennheiser Ambio as when we reviewed it it was for 2 lakhs this is for 1 lakh 15,000 rupees and if you are okay accommodating satellite speakers around you 
trust me you are going to get a very 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 immersive experience because this soundbar sounds extremely good and is definitely worth it if you are someone that's looking to build a home theater in your house and you don't want to have cables running all over the place and you don't want a dedicated amp amplifier sitting below your tv or projector and you want a simple plug and play solution because let's face it you don't need anyone to come and set this up for you you can just plonk it under your tv plonk it up plonk the uh, satellite speakers where you want it press the auto eq switch on your tv and you are go you can set up the soundbar in 15 minutes that's how much time it took me to set it up so there you have it guys that was our review of the samsung q950a it is an absolutely impressive soundbar and if you are in the market i highly recommend you go and check it out it will it will definitely give you a cinematic experience at home especially if like me you still haven't ventured into the theaters to see any of the new movies this is really bringing the theater home thank you so much guys for watching and for more from the world of technology you can subscribe to the channel we will catch you in another video it's goodbye for now